If you work in DevOps or are hoping to work in DevOps, I'm not dropping any knowledge bombshells when I tell you that we have a lot of tools and technologies we're responsible for. And if we continue on the same trajectory we've been on for the last few years, there's even more work looming for us in the future. One of the common phrases you'll hear tossed around is DevSecOps. So wait, now DevOps is in charge of security too? Well, sort of yes, sort of no, and I'm gonna explain to you exactly what that means in this video. Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button, and this is DevOps for Developers, where I talk about DevOps. If that's surprising to you, I'm not really sure what to say. So DevSecOps, does this mean that DevOps is now responsible for security as well? In summary, not really, and here's why. Security, much like DevOps, is everyone's responsibility. In our modern world, no one gets a free pass for security, but there's a subtle distinction now in how we use the word security. There's security, the team, and there's security, the process. Just like in DevOps, we may have a DevOps team, but the actual process of using DevOps to deliver software is shared by the entire organization. I think the distinction between the process and the team is often understated and the source of a great deal of miscommunication in our industry. When it comes to security, there's no way you can be an expert in network security, physical security, database security, authentication, authorization, access controls, and not to mention application-specific security. There's currently thousands of vulnerabilities reported each month, so it's literally impossible to stay on top of which ones impact you and work on other non-security tasks. So what does that mean for DevOps and security in a DevSecOps world? Well, for me, it means we still need a security team. We need experts who can make recommendations and remediations for their area of expertise. Smaller companies may not have this luxury though, but we can still be vigilant in security by implementing the second part of this plan. That's automation. And it relies on the same skills that DevOps has been using for years. When your development team is writing application code, we don't wait until they deploy to production to look for bugs, right? That's where DevOps the team builds the tools and pipelines that automate DevOps the process. That includes things like running the tests, triggering peer reviews of code, validating and automating build steps, and finally deploying to production and verifying that the deployment was successful. We can use those same skills to automate security practices into our pipeline so we aren't on the hook for manually identifying security vulnerabilities. Putting this into practice, it means we build our infrastructure using Infrastructure as Code, or IAC, so there's a written, documented configuration of what the infrastructure should look like. We also implement least privileged services. If you've been around computers for longer than, oh, about an hour, you know how big of a pain in the ass this is, but it's important to take the time to do it. One tip on this, don't ask for permission to do it the right way. It's expected that you do, so just do it that way. Understand that you will get hacked. It's not if, it's when. And in many scenarios, your only course of action is to minimize the damage. This is why least privilege is so important. An attacker can't steal data they can't get to. Logs are often a critical piece of this. Sometimes it's only because of the logs that you knew that you were attacked in the first place, and it's those same logs that will be your only proof in determining what data was accessed. So logging is important, as is storing your logs in a read-only location where the attacker can't delete them when they're done raping and pillaging your servers. That still leaves a lot of boxes to check and tasks to complete, which is why this whole area falls to DevOps to begin with. We know how to automate boring routine stuff so that it just happens hour after hour, day after day. Check out tools like Sneak that can be used to integrate into your CI CD pipeline. It can check for common infrastructure misconfigurations, inspect Docker files for security holes, and scan your code for known security vulnerabilities. And it can do this automatically for every line of code written by every developer on your team. 
There are other tools that do this as well, and I'm not intentionally excluding them. I'm just referencing Sneak because it's the one that I do have some familiarity with. So the future of DevOps and security, it's actually looking really promising because the security teams have a lot of great input and DevOps has the skills and resources to automate that input into actionable feedback. If you want to learn more about how security and DevOps and the rest of the software industry overlap to build scalable, efficient software, check out my DevOps roadmap. There's a link for it in the description down below. And be sure to subscribe to see my latest videos when they're published. And I will see you in the next video.